for Cubs baseball tonight from beautiful Wrigley Field. The Cubs open up a four game set against our friends to the north the Montreal Expos before another huge capacity crowd here on Chicago's north side. Hello again everybody along with Steve Stone. I'm Chip Carey. Welcome to Cubs baseball tonight on Fox Sports Net Chicago Plus and Steve it's obvious the Cubs are not going to make the postseason barring a second half miracle now but a chance to look a bit into the future as today Jose Nieves makes his first start in the 1999 season a man the Cubs hope will be their opening day shortstop in the year 2000. Nieves had a pretty good run at it in AAA and we're going to take a look into the future and Jose Nieves is part of that future. Now he can run obviously he can hit the ball pretty well he's not going to have tremendous power but it's good enough as a middle infielder and tomorrow night we're going to see Micah Bowie. And we're going to see a little bit more of the Cub future, and I think that's what you can expect the rest of the way. We're going to see some young guys. It's pretty much chip like about a 59-game audition for next year. You can't tell all that much in spring training, but you can tell under game conditions during the regular season, and that's what they're going to do. And that's been the story for the Montreal Expos for the last several seasons and their manager, Felipe Alou. They continue to play with a very young lineup. They have rallied of late. They've got the same record at this time of the year that they had in the 1998 season, but clearly a long way to go for the Expos north of the border before they reach competitive Major League Baseball. And that has to play right in the hands of Kevin Tappany tonight. He gets the start for the Cubs. You'd like his chances, although he was beaten by Montreal his last time out. He's got to be aware of Vladimir Guerrero and Michael Barrett. Those are the two stars in this team. And Kevin Tappany goes against Dustin Hermanson. Last year, Hermanson had a great year. He was 14 and 11. This year, it hasn't been too good. He's 3 and 10, and the Cubs hit him pretty well the last time they saw him. Now, there's some sentiment in Montreal that they might eventually make him a closer. Right now, he's in that starting rotation, but at 3 and 10, he's really struggled, and he struggled because he hasn't been able to get the off-speed pitch over the plate. Kevin Tappany has also struggled a little bit, Chip, and he would like to right the ship, and I can't think of any place better to pitch than Wrigley Field with the wind blowing in and that's the case tonight. A pitcher's paradise is the friendly confines. Tonight, it's the Cubs and the Expos. Game one of four. We're glad you're with us tonight here on Fox. Starting lineups and our first pitch come your way right after this timeout. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by your friendly Chicago area Dodge dealers. Test drive the future at your local Dodge dealer today. Amico, you expect more from a leader. Olympic, protect your deck with Olympic Maximum. Guaranteed to let you skip a year of deck care. Amstel Light, always satisfying, never watered down. Amstel Light, the beer drinkers like beer. ComEd, the official electric company of the Chicago Cubs. ComEd, what do you do with your power? And by Southwest Airlines, with pair Solo, you have the freedom to go places. Guests of Fox Sports Net Chicago receive a handsome piece of jewelry from Henry K. Jewelry, third level Water Tower Place. It's been a tradition since 1876. Think about that. That's more than 120 years ago that this company started making Budweiser under Adolphus Bush. The family has always put in the forefront protect the excellence of the product Budweiser. And I think he would be very happy that the generations of his family have practiced what he taught us. find everything you need for bed and bath at Ward's, but you won't find values like this anywhere else. Early round action. He can still play it out. What's this? Oh, he should look to the caddy for advice. Oh, oh my. Oh, well, that will cost him a stroke. Fox Sports Net brings you early round action as the PGA Tour's best shoot it out at Warwick Hills. First round coverage of the Buick Open, Thursday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. <laughs> It's a gorgeous night for baseball here at the friendly confines of Wrigley Field. A big crowd filing in for tonight's game, one of the four games set against the Montreal Expos. Montreal comes in at 39 and 62, a young team that's won just 16 of 46 games on the road 
in 1999. Manny Martinez leads it off in center field, followed by a superstar in the making, Michael Barrett, behind the plate. Jose Vidro's at second base, then it's Vladimir Guerrero, then it's Brad Fulmer, who's at everything in sight that's coming up from AAA. Rondell White has really struggled against the Cubs. Shane Andrews at third base, Cabrera the shortstop, and Dustin Hermanson pitches bats ninth against Cub right-hander Kevin Tappany, who has not won since June 24th against Colorado. And there's a look at Kevin Tappany on for his 20th start, looking for his seventh win. And unfortunately, Kevin just hasn't been hitting his spot. I think he's going to turn it around tonight. This is as good a night as you can expect to pitch here. The wind is blowing straight in. It's going to make it real tough, especially for a team that doesn't have a whole lot of power. There you see the flags flapping in from the center field direction. It was a great day to pitch yesterday. A long day of baseball won by the Mets in 13 innings, 5 4 the final score, dropping the Cubs to 48 and 54 on the year. First pitch is a strike, says Angel Hernandez, the home plate umpire, and it's nothing in one to Martinez. A 280 batter with a couple of home runs and 20 driven in. Manny Martinez tried to pull everything against the Cubs in Montreal, and that's probably one of the reasons why Kevin Tappany is staying away from him. If you do stay away, you'll hit that ground ball to the left side. Martinez hit just about everything in sight in that series. Six out of 15 against the Cubs in Montreal, including a two for four outing against Tappany. And he pulls that ball toward the Emerson short diving stop by the rookie one down. Well, if that's what the future looks like, I like the way it's begun. One man down here in the top of the first. Pretty good effort by Jose Nieves. Going to his right, and he snags it. You figure Martinez was going to pull it. He did. A little too good of an 0-2 pitch from Kevin Tappany. But an excellent way to break into a start for the Cubs. One man down. Here's Michael Barrett, just 22 years of age. And Steve, I really think they got to find out where they're going to play this guy. The Expos say they want him to be their catcher of the future. He's behind the plate tonight. But he's also played third base, and he's played that spot very well for them. They also have Chris Widger, a former number one pick of Seattle, that they've already signed to a multi-year contract. The ball and strike. One and two now. Barrett's going to have to throw the ball better than he threw it when we were in Montreal. Because that was a problem for him. But they do have Widger for three years. I'm not sure if he has much flexibility to come out from behind the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Fox Sport Nets Chicago would like to welcome its affiliate Insight Communications and their viewers in Rockford, Illinois to Wrigley Field tonight. Game one of four against Montreal. Full count now to Barrett. Three and two. Number one pick by Montreal back in 1995. He's out of Pace Academy in Atlanta. He showed he could hit the ball all over and eventually he's going to hit for power. A chopper to Nieves. He comes in. Got a little nonchalant that time. Drops it at short. And he commits his first error of the year. Well, he's fielding 500. He made a great play. And then on the routine play, just had it bounce out of the glove. And that's what you hate to see young players do. You can understand errors on tough plays. But routine plays are the ones, quite obviously, you have to make. And at times, Nieves has had some problems with the glove in the minor leagues, and he boots the ball here in the first inning for Jose Vidro. Vidro hitting 315. He's a switch hitter and tapping way out in front with strike one. Well, this is a guy that was very impressive when we saw him just a week ago. He hits much better from the left side. 337 as opposed to 220. And eight of his nine home runs have come as a left-hand hitter. Sprayed foul out of play. This is a guy that's had his problems with the glove this year. Although he's made only eight errors, he's not real sure-handed in the field. But they have him in there strictly because of his offensive prowess from the left side especially. He was a sixth-round pick in 1992 by Montreal. And Tampany serves that ball. It's shot off the glove of guy. He recovers, throws the first close play, and in time. Bang banger at first, and Joe West rings up Vidro on a very close play. I don't think number two. I don't think it was that close. I think Vidro had it beaten by a step. But the Cubs will take it as we watch it again. Gary Gaetti with a blast and then a one-hop throw. Watch it again. And Vidro has it beaten clearly. 
So Joe West is 0 for 1. And we'll be glad to take the break. Runner at second with two outs for Vladimir Guerrero. Guerrero lifetime against Tampa. Just two out of ten. But what a star this guy's going to be. He's 23 years old. And already with 80 major league home runs. One ball, no strikes in the top of the first. Line drive right back up the middle of base hit. Here comes Barrett around third. There'll be no play. And Montreal jumps in front, 1-0 on the 74th RBI of the year by Vladimir Guerrero. Guerrero is the one guy in the middle of this lineup that can really kill you on a daily basis. He takes it right back through the middle. And it was a bullet hit right back at Tampany. And Goodwin thought about it and then realized that Guerrero turned first base aggressively. He was going to read the angle of that throw home. If he saw a rainbow coming in, he was going to go to second. So wisely, you get the ball into second because he had no shot at all at Barrett. So another unearned run given up by Tampany to this Montreal team. He had three charged to him. Up at Olympic Stadium, and an unearned run here in the first gives Montreal the one to nothing lead. Here's Fulmer. The young first baseman Stoney really got a jolt. The wake up call in Ottawa, Triple A. Since coming back from that demotion, he's hit everything in sight for them. Well, they jolted him twice, just in case the first one didn't take. They sent him down again, but brought him back, and now he's swinging the bat pretty well. And there were a lot of clubs at the trade deadline very interested in acquiring this young man. He had 44 doubles last year. He's got a good solid stroke and I think they were a little surprised he got off to a slow start and even more surprised that it affected his defense which last year was pretty good. One ball no strikes and the breaking ball just missed two and oh. I'm a little surprised that Guerrero doesn't try to run. This is one of the fastest men in the league, but as yet he hasn't learned the intricacies of base stealing. The 2-0. Right through there, two balls and a strength. When you say those intricacies, what exactly do you mean? Well, I mean, Chip, a good base runner reads the keys on a pitcher. Sometimes they'll look at the back knee. Sometimes they'll look at the left shoulder if it's a right-hand pitcher. And as soon as they get a key for a pitcher, and that is the key is when they know he's going home for sure, that's when they'll get that first step burst. Two and one. There's a high fly ball hit to shallow center field. Davis goes out. He calls everybody off. He's got it. And the inning is over. So Davis fielding 667 in his major league start tonight for the Cubs. One unearned run in the top of the first. Here come the Cubs of Wrigley. Not yet. Not yet. But on October 31st, Southwest Airlines will take off and fly to an exciting new destination, Hartford Springfield. So get ready for October 31st when we finally... You are now free to move about the country. To watch the Bulls and White Sox play, there's Comiskey Park and the United Center. To see everything else, you've got to go underground. Hey, it's the show behind the show. Each week, Bulls Sox Underground takes you behind the scenes for a whole new look at the Bulls and White Sox and Tom Waddles leading the charge. Need I say more? Bulls Sox Underground. Go behind the games and see what goes on when the fans go home. Bulls Sox Underground, Sundays at 11.30 on Fox Sports Net Chicago. Have you ever seen my partner, Chris Myers, do an interview on Fox Sports News? I don't know what he's got, but I mean, the biggest names in sports, they just seem to open up to him. You grew up in a, a tough neighborhood. You escaped gangs and, and drugs, but your little brother wasn't so lucky. Can, can you talk about that? I know this is difficult. You're going to be all right. An unearned run for Montreal gives them the lead after a half inning. Here come the Cubs. For our manager Jim Riggleman tonight in the series opener. Curtis Goodwin really slumping. 
is the leadoff man tonight in center field, followed by the dandy little glove man, Mickey Morandini. Sammy Sosa hits third and right. Then it's Mark Grace chasing a couple of milestones. Henry Rodriguez in left. Jeff Reed behind the plate. Nieves the shortstop. Gary Gaiety at third. Kevin Tampany pitches. Bats ninth against right-hander Dustin Hermanson. And there's a look at Dustin Hermanson on for the 22nd start. As you can see, a very disappointing year for him with a high ERA. But he has an explosive slider. And this is a guy that won 14 games last year. They thought he was going to take the next step and maybe be a 20 game winner. But it hasn't worked out that way in the GM Expo defense. White Martinez and Guerrero left to right. Andrews Cabrera Vidro and Fulmer Barrett behind the plate. Hermanson on the hill. And he misses with a fastball on the first pitch in the bottom of the first inning. One ball no strikes. Hermanson just three and ten. He's lost seven in a row. And he's got great stuff. It's hard to believe this guy could lose that many games consecutively with that terrific arm. Last year he showed a very good changeup, and this year he's not throwing a lot of off-speed pitches. And that's probably one of the reasons, although the changeup is forthcoming. The 1-1. One, one. There it was, and Curtis took it for strike two. Curtis just two for his last 35. And he's hitting 238 on the year. Now backing up at third is Shane Andrews. With a two-strike count on Goodwin, he doesn't figure he'll be bunting. He wasn't, and it's out of play. When you have a guy that throws a fastball between 93 and 95, has a slider that just snaps at the end and breaks hard into the left-hand hitters, it's hard to imagine that he would have that kind of losing streak, but he has. And the Cubs hope to add to his miseries here tonight. Big games in the American League tonight. Toronto is in New York. The Jays just five games behind the Yankees. They're scoreless after two in the Bronx. Boston at home against the Indians. They trail the Tribe 5-4 after three. Boston just five and a half games behind New York. Sean Green had his hitting streak snapped at 28 yesterday for Toronto. He'll try to start another one tonight. It's two and two to Goodwin. That's going to be a terrific race. That Toronto team just playing great baseball and they have some wonderful young arms at the major league level. And in Billy Koch they have a hundred mile an hour closer. Goodwin works it full now three and two. The payoff. Ground ball hit to short. Cabrera, good play. Off balance throw. He got him over at first one down. Cabrera is a pretty good glove man at shortstop. This was a guy that shifted to second last year when Mark Grezelanek was at short. But they traded Grezelanek to the Los Angeles Dodgers and it opened up shortstop for Cabrera. He's had his problems hitting, but not defensively. And he gets it there just an eyelash ahead of good one. And this time he is out at first. So Joe West is run for two tonight. Here's Morandini. Mickey looks at a strike. A four game hit streak for the dandy little glove man. But Mickey hitting 264, three homers and 30 runs driven in. Montreal with an early lead of 1 0. And Mickey, ground ball to first. Good play by Fulmer. A full layout dive in the Sukahara takes care of Morandini for out number two. Well, that's more what they expect out of Brad Fulmer. That's the way he played first base last year. This year he's made only two errors and he's starting now to make plays consistently. Look at this one step quickness to his right. Decides to take it himself and he does. First base maybe the hottest position in the National League for young players shortstop in the American League with Fulmer with Travis Lee who has been slumping of late Todd Hilton of course for the Colorado Rockies. That kid can really play for Montreal. And here's Sammy batting for the first time tonight. 40 home runs for Sosa tied with Mark McGuire. He's third in RBIs in the National League with 93. I know many of you read the comments Sammy had regarding the Jose Hernandez Terry Mulholland trade yesterday. Swing and a miss. And you know you you can understand where Sammy's coming from. Maybe Jose Hernandez was his closest friend on this team. And anytime one of your friends is traded away, you, 
you feel bad for him because I think Sammy wanted Jose to stay here. Things just didn't work out for the Cubs. No, but there's another side of the story, and that is what the Cubs tried to do with Jose. Swung in line like a rocket, deep toward left. It's a line drive homer. Souvenir time, and we're tied. And how about that catch by that fan in the bleachers? exactly what Sammy did. I was worried that it wouldn't stay up long enough to go out of the ballpark. He hit that baby under radar and we're tied. 41 and 94 for Sosa. And here is Mark Grace, another RC $100 homer, benefiting today's Little League recipient, Evergreen Park Little League, courtesy of RC, the official soft drink of Little League. 1-1 in the first. And Grace pops it up right side Vidro and Fulmer it'll be Vidro he's under it he's got it and the inning is over a line drive rocket hit by Sosa will address his comments in the paper a bit later on in tonight's ball game one one after one here at a raucous Wrigley There's something new about Mary. Are you the guy making all that big noise? And now, it's funnier than ever. Is that a hair gel? Mm -hmm. Now, with outrageous new footage, Mary's better than ever. Coming to video August 3rd. Your local Ford store is the place to win. Stop in now and you can win tickets to the first ever race at the Chicago Motor Speedway. Ford is the official car and truck, and every Ford store has a winner. Win tickets to the race. Great racing apparel, and get a free Ford racing poster just for stopping in. Join your local Ford store in becoming a part of Chicago's history during the inaugural race at the Chicago Motor Speedway. This is the race, and you'll want to be there. So register to win at your Ford store today. Get to Sears National Auto Sale for amazing deals on tires, wheels, batteries, and more, no matter what you drive. Right now, all Bridgestone tires are on sale, every size in stock in special order. Plus, the Response RST Touring 2000 is as low as $29.99. That's our best-selling touring tire at the lowest price of the season. So make tracks to the National Auto Sale at Sears, your smart stop for tires and batteries. The CTA presents the Fox Sports Net Chicago Community Calendar. Let's take a look at that home run again. And the home run replay is brought to you by ComEd, the official electric company of the Chicago Cubs, providing power to Northern Illinois customers for over 100 happy years. And what a catch by that fellow with a 278 t-shirt. Here's Rondell White. He's leading off the Montreal second. Game tied 1-1 on a line drive homer by Sammy Sosa. I'd like to send along best wishes to a good friend of mine, Ernie Harris, working on tonight. And his identical twin, Artie. They're big Beanie Baby collectors, we understand. <laughs> one ball, one strike. Broken bat toward third. Guyatty makes the play, the throw to first in time. Pete Mackin in their third base coach almost took one for the team there. And there's one down here. In the top of the second. And come to think of it, Ernie and Artie, same to you. Gary Gaetti, who used to play for the Twins, makes a real good toss across the diamond. And Pete McCannon saw the head of that bat flying at him and vacated the coach's box, a la Rene Latchman. Here's Shane Andrews, hitting just 204, five homers, 22 runs batted in. Andrews, an original pick by Montreal, a first-round draft choice back in 1990. Had a terrific year last season as far as the power numbers concerned. He hit 25 home runs but hit just 238. This year, only five home runs and a batting average of 204. Ground ball up the middle. Morandini behind the second base bag. Hop, skip, and a toss. In time. Two down. 
That was a real good play by Mickey Morandini. He was shading him up the middle. But normally you don't figure to get thrown out from that deep in the outfield. But Mickey's well into center field by the time he gets this throw off. And he does get him at first. So the dandy little glove man shows a little arm. And he gets him by a half step. So two outs, base is empty for Orlando Cabrera, and he looks at his strike. Cabrera, just 24 years old, out of Cartagena, Colombia. An undrafted free agent signed by Fred Ferreira and this Montreal organization. Well, they have done a great job with international scouting. They were, one of the, they were one of the real good teams that mining the Dominican Republic and that was because of the Aloos. They did a great job down there in Montreal for years and years. Had a good flow of talent. And got a lot of Dominican players now as say a Colombian player or two. And there's a look at one of the real good managers in our game Felipe Alou. Two balls and a strike. High fly ball hit right at Sosa in shallow right. He charges in. He's got it in tap when he has. A one, two, three second. He's retired four men in a row. To the bottom half we go. Henry Rodriguez to lead it off. We're all tied at one. Come and get it, sports fans. It's Fox Sports News this morning. Let's go. Serving two hours of the hottest highlights with the coolest covers. I like it. I like it. It's a power breakfast without the calories. That's right. You heard me. Fox Sports News this morning, every morning. Over the years, a lot of businesses have put their names on one line of trucks. The one that's overall the most powerful line of pickups on the road. The one that was first to offer quad cab versatility. And the first and only full-size pickup to receive J.D. Power & Associates' most appealing award four years running. We understand this name faith. We're pretty fussy about what we put ours on, too. Now get a $1,000 cash allowance on Dodge Ram during the Dodge Summer Clearance. Long distance speed I heard that sound a hundred times. Morning. Greeting available only between the hours of 5 a.m. and 12. It could only mean one thing. This was a cellular town. Supreme supply on A to B, B to C, C to D. 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. and I'm no hero. I'm just a guy with a better way. The Sprint PCS Free and Clear Plan. Now as little as a dime any time with free long distance. His name will never appear on a scouting report, and that makes no difference to him. RC Cola, the official soft drink of Little League Baseball. Drink RC Cola and get bats, balls, and other baseball gear. See marked RC multi-packs for details. Four errors. Zero booze. RC Cola, the official soft drink of Little League Baseball. Drink RC Cola and get bats, balls, and other baseball gear. See marked RC multi-packs for details. Well, friends, it's Can't Miss Baseball Thursday. This week, week, watch history as baseball's home run king battles one of the best hitters ever. Mark McGuire leads the Cardinals against Tony Gwynn in his quest for 3,000 hits. It's the Redbirds and the Padres Thursday at 7 on Fox Sports Net Chicago. Tony Gwynn, Wade Boggs, and Cal Ripken Jr. all closing in on 3,000 hits. It's too bad that Tony is probably going to get that milestone on the road. The Padres head out on a very long road trip. Beginning tonight, they're in St. Louis. But what an achievement for Tony Gwynn, one of the great players in our game. Wish him the best of luck as Henry stands in. Same to Wade Boggs, same to Cal. Boggs needs six, Gwynn needs six. And they're both starting to turn it on. Cal's had some physical problems this year, but he'll get there. Now, if you had to guess what would be the perfect hit as Henry goes down swinging on three pitches for Tony Gwynn, what would you say it would be for him to get 3,000? Perfect hit is a little looping, sliced fly ball that falls just out of reach of the shortstop, just in front of the left fielder, or one of those squibbers to the left side of the infield that both guys dive at the same time, and the ball gets by him. We've seen him do that over and over and over again during the course of his long and illustrious career. Jeffrey, the batter, fouls it away. I would love to see him do that against a real tough left-handed pitcher, too. Because he personifies the ability by a left-hand hitter to hit left-hand pitch. And for Wade Boggs, 
probably work the count to three and two, foul off about ten pitches, <laughs> right, and then line a ball into left center field, which is what he does all the time. Reed sends a rocket straight away center on the run. Martinez at the track. He stops dead in his tracks, and Reed flies out. Out number two here in the second inning for Cal Ripken Jr. I'd like to see him have about a ten pitch at bat with a different stance with every with every swing. Well, he's probably going to get a line drive down the line in left field or hit a home run. He's got one of those looping swings. He's always been a pull hitter. And you got to figure that in this day and age is just a wonderful accomplishment because of the durability you have to show and the years you have to put in. Here's Jose Nieves hitting to a double play in the game yesterday as a pinch hitter. And now takes a strike in his first 1999 start. He swings for the downs and comes up empty. How do you gauge the progress of this player? Certainly one game's not going to make or break his Cubs career, but what do you look for? What do you see him becoming here in the next four to six weeks? Well, it's real hard for me to evaluate what kind of player he is. I saw the numbers like you saw in AAA, but unless you see somebody play day to day, you really don't get a good feeling for what he can do. I think we'll reserve comment on that. We'll watch him play a couple of weeks. We'll see the kind of player he is. Really see what kind of an arm he has. And then we'll see. This is a great opportunity for him because there is no doubt in the Cub organization that the shortstop position for the year 2000 is wide open. And it's really his position if he can claim it. One and two. And he strikes out swinging. Hermanson had a good slider in that at bat. And he struck out two Cubs in the ball game. After two, it's tied at one here at Wrigley Field. Small from the best. Over 15,000 kids already have. And don't forget to compete in the Fox Sports That Chicago Skills Competition. Call 630-PLAYBALL for a free brochure and a week you'll never forget. The White Sox Training Center is brought to you by Target and Fox Sports That Chicago. His grace on the field can't be matched. His contributions can't be missed. His homers travel 450 feet. His support goes even farther. Major League Baseball Charities has teamed with the Boys and Girls Clubs of America. Together, we're giving kids a world of opportunities. He has the drive to be a big leaguer, but hasn't forgotten what it takes to be a little kid. Beautiful night for baseball here at Wrigley Field. Dustin Hermanson, the Montreal hitter. And he swings and misses for strike one. Here's tonight's Southwest Airlines trivia trove question submitted by Robert Toba of Mount Prospect, Illinois. Who is the man that Kerry Wood punched out for his Major League record tying 20th strikeout May 6th, 1998? So we'll have the answer for you in the bottom half of our third inning. I'll give you your choice, Jim. Either Billy Spires or Derek Bell. Tampany has his first strikeout. Hermanson goes down on three pitches, and there's one away. He's retired from the row. Who's it going to be as he looks at a call? Third right there. Well, I knew the answer. I was not going to disqualify myself from tonight's trivia question. Well, let's go. I'll say Derek Bell. Okay. I'll say Billy Spires. Okay. <laughs> You just are in the mood to argue with me today. You've been that way all day today. Broke it back, ground ball right back to tap. He's got it. Martinez over two. Two up, two down, and Michael Barrett will be the batter. He reached on. Jose Nieves' first error of the year and scored an unearned run for the Expos. Right back at him, and Kevin fielding his position well. Takes care of it. I want to thank our good friend Dave Spingola of Sophia's Restaurant here at Wrigleyville for taking good care of our Fox Sports Net Chicago crew tonight with some terrific, terrific dinner entrees tonight. Sophia's in Wrigleyville right down the street at North Park. Terrific stuff. Dave, it was great to see you. Great to see some of your lovely assistants at the ballpark, too. There's Dave. So thanks for taking good care of us. Food was great. And the price was right. We appreciate it. One ball, one strike to Michael Barrett. One, 
one game we're in the third. Barrett just 22 years old rolls that ball foul. Just think if this Montreal team ever gets their ownership situation straightened out if they ever get their stadium situation taken care of. And they get some kind of stability north of the border or in Charlotte or Northern Virginia or somewhere else. The way they develop talent, man, this team could be very good very quickly again. I think what they're going to have to do is start developing some more arms. I think position players, they're going to be okay for a while. But like everybody else, if you don't develop your own arms, it's very costly to go out and get someone else's. Very generous strike zone takes care of Barrett and Tappany is struck out too. He's retired seven straight Expos and after two and a half we're all tied at one. But the Southwest Airlines trivia trove question who did Kerry Wood punch out for his major league record tying 20 to strike out May 6th of 1998. Do you folks know the answer at that party across the street. And it was Derek Bell. How about the slider Kerry Wood had on that day? Unbelievable. Well, how about the hit he gave up? One hit, fan 20, didn't walk anybody. The hit was off the glove of Kevin Ory. And it just trickled away. Could have easily been an error. But, you know, in the third inning, who figures that you're on the edge of greatness? It was still one of the most dominating games in the history of our sport. Gary Guide, he takes ball one. Did not hear the results today, but Kerry again played catch today. He'll play catch again tomorrow as he begins at long arduous process of rehabbing that right elbow he'll keep telling you his hope is to be back in time for spring training next year with a chance to make the Cubs team out of spring training there are so many obstacles so many roadblocks in his way you can never predict whether that happens but everybody's certainly hoping that that thunderbolt for a right arm continues to improve and continues to show the drastic amount of recovery ability that he's been able to show so far he sends a pop to the right side. Fulmer drifts back. He'll give way to Vidro. And Vidro puts Gaiety away for out number one here in the Cubs half of our third inning. Robert Tova of Mount Prospect. You've now qualified to win a trip for two to see the Cubs take on the Astros in Houston on September 10th. That's courtesy of Southwest Airlines. To enter the Southwest Airlines Trivia Trove contest, send in a postcard with your trivia question and answer to Fox Sports Net Chicago if we use it on the air you'll qualify for the trip to South Texas and there's the address to send those entries here's Kevin Tappany ball one pitchers against the Expos this year hitting a robust 250 that's an unbelievably high total and how about the Boston Red Sox they saw Cleveland score five in the first inning well now they're through four and they're tied at five that's going to be some race with Boston, Toronto, and Oakland. Not all that far back in the wild card race in the American League. Keep waiting for Mr. Martinez to come back, too. Remember, he's on the disabled list. Red Sox are hanging in there. Ten games over 500. They're only five and a half games behind the Yankees. Two and two. Ground ball by tap to the shortstop. Cabrera has to charge. He'll flip to first in time. And there are two men down. Well, Pedro says he's feeling pretty good and that when he is due to come off the list he will be able to come off and start and that is music to the ears of Dan Duquette the general manager of the Boston Red Sox and don't forget they have another Martinez too. Ramon is working out in the minor leagues rehabbing that arm we've got Wilton Guerrero now playing second base so something happened to Jose Pedro and normally when Guerrero comes in the game that's where you start thinking about hitting it because Wilton can hit it but he just can't field it very well. So he's at second in this ball game. Vidro grounded out his first time but he has to be pulled from the ball game. We'll get an update and pass it along to you as soon as we know. 1-0 to Curtis who grounded out to short his first time up. Only Pedro Guerrero were still around. They're playing third base, they could corner the market on them. Pedro could hit, if you recall, had some very big years for the Dodgers, then the Cardinals late. 
Yeah, he was a good one. He couldn't he was catch a, a cold, a, though. No, he couldn't, couldn't feel the ball very well. Into the seats. It's two and two. Amazingly enough, the Guerrero brothers have 23 airs this year. Vladimir with 13. Wilton with 10. But I think that I would take Vladimir if they decided to let him go. Sure. You could, do, you could do a lot worse. You're a charitable kind of guy. The 2-2. Two -two. Here's a line drive. Sinking at the shortstop Orlando Cabrera, but he puts it away. And Tappany and Hermanson locked in a classic pitcher's duel after three. 1-1 one, one. as we head to the fourth. Southwest. More coverage options. Best possible price. The Wellstones like that I'm independent. I stand up for their rights. Jim switched because I researched and Taylor made better health coverage for his company. Only independent agents offer these advantages. We need to let everybody know. Look for this declaration of independence only at your local independent insurance agent. Well, friends, don't forget this Thursday is Aaron the Bear Beanie Baby Day at Wrigley Field. The first 12,000 kids, 13 and under, attending the Cubs Expos game August 5th. Receive an Aaron the Bear Beanie Baby with a commemorative card. Compliments of Pepsi. Aaron has recently been retired. So this is your last chance to add this Beanie Baby to your collection. Remember, only one admission to the park and one Beanie Baby per child. Steve was at the Aaron the Bear Beanie Baby retirement ceremony. It was emotional. There's no doubt about it. Not a moist, not a dry eye left in the house. Well, he's put in some quality years as a green bear. This will be his last public appearance. Or her. Or both. That would be news. Wilton Guerrero tried to butt his way on his first attempt. This time he looks low. And the count evens a ball and a strike. Wilton's been a better hitter this year from the right side. He's hitting 280 on the year. And he flies it right to Henry and left. Eight in a row retired by Tampany. And there's one man out. Big story out of baseball today. Minor league umpires have parted ways with umpire negotiator Richie Phillips. Phillips says he was resigned. He said he did that when two dozen minor leaguers agreed to become permanent major league umpires September 1st. Two minor league umps who did not want to be identified said that Phillips was fired. Ground ball hit to the end of third. Vladimir Guerrero is out number two. Well, I think, Chip, that's pretty much a you can't fire me, I quit situation. But obviously, Richie Phillips wanted the minor league umpires to follow the advice that he gave the major league umpires. When they didn't get along with it, go along with that, it made the major league umpires' position very tenuous at best. And as we know, it all kind of fell apart and at least 22 of them combined in both leagues will lose their jobs over it. Phillips has led the major league umpires since 1978. Said the big league umpires will file unfair labor practice charges against the American and National Leagues Tuesday in New York. He'll ask that the National Labor Relations Board will seek an injunction in federal court to prevent baseball from forcing out those 22 umpires on September 2nd. I think what you're going to see happen is Richie Phillips will probably, this is just a guess on my part, ask, be asked by the major league umpires to not lead their union either. Some of those fired umpires will be brought back, as will some of those minor league umpires on September 2nd. That will probably be, in my opinion, the likely compromise. Fulmer lines out to second. Tappany's retired 10 in a row, and we're zipping right along through three and a half. It's a 1-1 one -one game. <laughs> Friends, he's a star in center field and a star in the mailroom. No, we're not talking about Steve Stone, but check out some of the fan mail Sox rookie Chris Singleton receives. Plus, find out how Paul Canerco went from Dodger draft pick to White Sox slugger. It's all on Bulls Sox Underground Sunday at 11.30 on Fox Sports at Chicago. 
Well, there's a young fan enjoying a little dinner or a snack in between meals. Only two hits, one for each team as the pitchers have dominated. This is a very chilly night here. This is refreshing after that tremendous wave of heat the Chicago Land area experience oh, has turned into a beautiful evening. I think that was the hottest I have ever been on Friday at the ballpark here. It was 103 degrees. Well, that was one of those days that was awfully tough, and the three hour and 40 minute game didn't help. One ball, one strike to Mickey, who grounded out to first his first time up. This time he grounds to the shortstop. Oh, good play. High throw, but on the mark. And eight in a row have been retired by Dustin Hermanson. Here's the man that has the lone cub hit, Sammy Sosa. A laser beam homer under radar into left field, his 41st of the year. Now take a look at the location. Normally, Sammy doesn't handle the high fastball. And that's where Hermanson went, only he got it belt high. He wanted it up higher. And Sammy hit a line drive right into that fan's glove. So 41 for Sammy. He's got the big lead, big league lead. Tough night talking tonight. Over Mark McGuire, although the Cardinals just scored a run. We'll see if Big Mac went deep as well. You would think when you hit a home run on a fastball, you could almost take it to the bank. You're going to see a slider on the first pitch. And that's what Sammy saw. It was a good one on the outside corner. No balls and a strike. Look at the flash bulbs popping here at Wrigley. Sammy now has three hits lifetime against Dustin Hermanson. All of them home runs. It's most unusual. He's three for 14 with three homers and six strikeouts. Well, it was a home run in St. Louis, by the way. By Ray Langford. Two balls and a strike to Sammy. Couldn't lay off. Two and two. It's all forgiven now with Sammy in the front office. Again, that story in the newspaper today. Well, Ed Lynch went down and, and explained to him his thinking. And quite obviously, when you see those type of headlines and you see the star of your team, commenting on what the front office is doing the reaction at least in this case from Ed Lynch was to go down and explain to him what he was thinking about and it's very simple this was an ongoing negotiation between Ed and Jose's agent almost this entire season at first he offered him a two year contract and eventually they got the three years chip at nine million dollars which they thought was a pretty good contract now Jose and his agent didn't think it was quite good enough and they wanted a little bit more so when it became apparent that they weren't going to be able to close that gulf, he was traded. From Jose's standpoint, he's got a chance to do something this year he wouldn't have done with the Cubs. Let's get a ring. The same thing for Terry Mulholland. And also, Jose is gambling that at the end of this year, as a free agent, somebody's going to pay him more than $3 million a year guaranteed for three years. That's what you do if you're a free agent and you think that the contract is not what you'd like. Race a rocket shot over Fulmer into the right field corner. He's going to try for two. Guerrero's got a great arm. The throw is into short left. Hit number 1999 in Mark Grace's career. It's a standing double. After he slid, though. Well, Mark Grace tried to test the arm of Vladimir Guerrero in Montreal, and he came in second best. Take a look at this hop. High over the head of Fulmer. And this one, instead of in right center, is down the line. Mark Grace tests the arm again, but this time he wins it. And now it's a standing double. I told you. 1,999 hits for Grace. 399 doubles for Grace. So here's Henry, a base hit could untie the game. It's one ball, no strikes. One more note on the Jose Hernandez situation. There's no law that says that if the Braves don't resign him, that the Cubs could not. And I have a feeling if the Braves don't resign him, the Cubs will be in the bidding for his services next year. And I think, you know, it, there wasn't any acrimony between the two sides. It was just a difference of opinion of the value that Jose had to the Cubs at this point. Hopefully he'll go down there. He'll do a terrific job for them. We wish the best to Jose and Terry Mulholland. 
And quite obviously you can understand the feelings of Sammy because Jose was about his best friend on the team. He viewed him as a protege and maybe a, a, a younger brother to a certain extent. Right. And so he was kind of hurt that they would trade him in that fashion. But from a business standpoint, if you can't sign somebody and you're not sure if he will come back, there are three players out there, three young players the Cubs will use to rebuild. Well, that's the thing. It's a win-win-win situation for everybody. For the Cubs, they get two young arms right now, another player to be named later. It is going to be a prospect. It's not just a throw-in kind of guy. Atlanta fills two very big needs for their team. And individually, Terry Mulholland and Jose Hernandez, as you said, have a chance to win a World Series title. The old daylight play. And Mark Grace dives back safely. Two balls, two strikes to Henry Rodriguez, who struck out swinging against Dustin Hermanson in our second inning. You want to make sure that you keep Grace close at second because, you know, the man is a perfect two for two. And he's liable to take off at any time. And now time is gone. Arms in the outfield, the best one in right with Vladimir Guerrero. Maybe the best in our league. And the 2 2. It's outside. And three balls, two strikes. I think it would be fitting for Mark Grace to get both his 400th double and his 2,000th hit on the same play. He wants a high fastball here. Let's see if he gets it there. Popped up. Left side. Andrews gives chase. And it's well out of play. You know, Chip, I kind of enjoy going to Montreal and I know that there are some quality enthusiastic baseball fans in Montreal. I'm just hoping that the situation is resolved and if the people in Montreal want the team badly enough they will step forward and put together a group that gets them a new facility and they can play in it and get it resolved. Ball four to Henry. Might have cool in. One of the news clippings we got before the game, it seems that Bud Selig's patience is starting to run out a little bit. You've got the Brochu group, you've got the Jacques Menard group. You still don't have a stadium plan in place. You're still drawing just over 9,100, 9,200 fans of ball game. The ballpark design is said to be at best a C plus design. It's not going to be a roofed facility, so you know it's going to be awfully cold, awfully wet and windy early and late in the year. There are a lot of ifs as Reed stands in and looks at a string. I think as long as the schedule makers see fit to send us there in July, I'm all for a non-domed stadium in Montreal. We get some of those April dates. That's, that's going to be real comfortable. Good, well, I don't think they're going to want to start the year on a 40-game road trip, unfortunately. So <laughs> every year somebody's going to get the shaft. Nothing in one to read. read it. One and one. The other big problem they have is Jeffrey Loria is the guy that's supposedly going to step up with $75 million U.S. to become the number one money man for that team. And so far, Stoney, he hasn't put pen to paper and written the check. And what is French for big hats and no cattle? Outside. Ron Chapeau Adavash. There you go. So eventually, when he puts the money down, I think that they've got a chance to get it done, but until he does that, there's still going to be speculation as to where they will wind up. That's in there for a strike. Now Jeff hit the ball as hard as you can hit it last time, but unlike Sammy, who hit a line drive home run, Jeff's ball got up above the stands. And tonight, when that happens, the wind is going to knock it down. But he had a very good look at Hermanson, who tried to sneak a fastball by him. End time call. Game tied 1 1 already in the fourth inning. Two on for the Cubs against Dustin Hermanson. The pitch. Just did stay alive. He fouled it straight back. What you got to tell you? Will they get that ballpark situation done in Montreal? Will they be in Canada next year? I wish I could tell you one way or the other, Chip. I, I've looked at both sides and I know that everybody that we've talked to. From the French side of There's the There's an awful lot of emotion says, involved. Oh, sure. They say yes, indeed. The deal is very close to being done, and it's going to happen for sure. 2-2. Two -two. Struck him out. But if you talk to the Anglo English people 
up in Montreal. They say there's still a lot of uncertainty. One thing for sure tonight, good pitchers do a 1-1 game. The season's in full swing. Steve Sachs and Kevin Kennedy take you between the lines and into the zone. No bullpen, no championships. It's baseball coverage all season long. And catch Fox Sports News primetime, nightly at 10. Superstitious? It's a little bit strong. I mean, I do whatever I have to do to help out the team. Let's say you got a tie game, full count, nobody's on. If I can eat a whole hot dog before the runner gets to first base, then he's coming home. In case of high scoring games, Rolex. New smoother tasting Rolex starts to neutralize acid in less than 10 seconds, getting you back on your game fast. Rolex. R O L A I D S. Spells relief. You know that grand slam last week? The 99 Ford ZX2 is all about feeling good. Good about how great it looks with a spoiler, fog lamp, sport wheel, and you in it. About the satisfaction in knowing ZX2 has more standard features like air, cassette, and a keyless remote that opens just the driver's door or both. Still priced $1,200 less than Cavalier. Getting more? Paying less. Feels pretty good, doesn't it? Ford ZX2. Now get 09 financing and 750 cash. Or choose only cash and get $1,500 at your local Ford store today. Get to Sears National Auto Sale for amazing deals on tires, wheels, batteries, and more, no matter what you drive. Right now, all Bridgestone tires are on sale, every size in stock in special order. Plus, the Response RST Touring 2000 is as low as $29.99. That's our best-selling touring tire at the lowest price of the season. So make tracks to the National Auto Sale at Sears, your smart stop for tires and batteries. All right, Cup fans, there are still tickets available for games during the 1999 season. For group ticket information, call 773-404-CUBS. For individual tickets, stop by the box office here at Wrigley, any Ticketmaster Ticket Center, or call 312-831-CUBS. Good seats still available for the rest of this Montreal series and next week's series against the Diamondbacks. And that includes a Monday night game on the 9th and Tuesday and Wednesday afternoon. And the Diamondbacks are an entertaining club. Matt Williams, Steve Finley, our old friend Louis Gonzalez, Jay Bell having banner years. The big unit, Randy Johnson doing just great. They've got a new closer, Matt Manti, and they lead the way in the West. Rondell White, 0 for 1. Now's the 2 0 pitch away. And the count 2 and 1. I think we're going to see Randy Johnson on Wednesday. And as you can see, Arizona leading by two and a half games. San Francisco picked up LeVon Hernandez thinking that he would help them close that gap. Ground ball up the middle. Mickey can't get it. It's into center field. And Rondell White has only the second Montreal hit. That snaps a string of 10 straight. Expos retired. This has been a surprising Montreal team because when you think of a team that's built for the artificial surface, and Montreal obviously is, you think of a fast team. This is not one of those. They've only stolen 44 bases. They've been caught 34 times. So not only have they not been a fast team, but they've been running very poorly. Because you like as a team to have at least a 75% success ratio, and they're not even close. Well, look at the numbers. They're next to last in batting average, last in runs scored, next to last in homers, last in walks, next to last in steals. They've committed the most errors. They're 11th in pitching. One positive, they've allowed the fewest home runs. They play in an airport. Ground ball just found. That's a great place to pitch. Always has been, always a tough place to score runs. However, when Montreal was looking like they were going to win everything in 1994, you would go into that ballpark and they would just club you and their pitching staff would hold you down. Those were the days when they had Marquise Grissom and Larry Walker and Moises Alou. Then they throw Pedro Martinez at you. They would close with John Wetland and Ken Hill would take the mound. And that was a terrific ball club. But then the strike came along. And unfortunately, when the strike ended, so did the attendance for the Expos. The fans, quite frankly, have never forgiven them for that. And then they lost most of their players to high salaried free agency. Shane Andrews, no balls in a strike, and that's really a part of the problem. That's something you were telling a lot of folks in Montreal. Look, if you want to keep the team here, you've got to support it. 
whether you're bitter or not isn't the point. You don't have a right to have a major league franchise. You can understand the bitterness. You can understand the disappointment. You can understand the rancor. But if you're a baseball fan, you've got to support the team that's there. The strike is over. It's gone. Certainly not forgotten. But that was five years ago. Oh, and baseball has certainly made a comeback. They've done as much as they can do to help get a lot more fan friendly. And last year, the home run race had a lot to do with the rejuvenation of this game. And the Cubs, of course, had three of the great stories in all of baseball. And it was a year filled with great stories. The Cubs had Kerry Wood, Sammy Sosa, and the fact that they were in the hunt for a wild card berth and finally got it on the 163rd game. But last year was a renaissance year in baseball. One and two to Andrews. Good stop by Reed County. Evens two and two. Game tied one apiece. An unearned run in the first inning after a Jose Nieves error. Vladimir Guerrero singled him home. So home Barrett, that is. That made it one nothing. And Sammy with a two-out line drive home that tied it in the first. I'd like to see Jose in the middle of a double play ground ball here. How about a line drive double play chance? White got back to first too quickly for that, however. Andrews lines out, one away. But with Cabrera up, perhaps you'll see another opportunity for that. See how Jose turns the twin killing. Cabrera has grounded into nine of them this year. And he flying to right his first time tonight. Ale scoreboard, Cleveland five, Boston five, bottom of the sixth at Fenway. White Sox leading the Tigers 5-2 in the sixth. Yankees and Toronto tied at one in the bottom of the fifth inning. Texas, Minnesota scoreless in the second. Later on, KC's in Anaheim. Baltimore visits Oakland, the A's 54 and 40, best home record in baseball. And Seattle hosts the Devil Rays of Tampa Bay. Here it's 1-1, top of the fifth already. Outside, ball one to Cabrera. ball club eight games behind Texas in the West in the wild card they're three and a half games behind the Toronto mile foul and on top of the roof down the left field line when Rondell White was a young player he had phenomenal speed. Two years in a row, he stole 50 and 42 bases. But the last two years, just 16 thefts each year, and as the leg problems have continued to plague him, the speed has gone downhill. It's outside, two and one. National League pitcher and player of the month announced today. The player, Mark McGuire. The pitcher, Randy Johnson. Well, I was 0 for 2, and you were 1 for 2. Runner goes, 2-1. Swung on, popped up. Left side, perhaps playable for Gaiety. Near the camera well, leans over, and can't get it. So it's 2-2. Two and two. McGuire had an awesome July. He was hit 15, 16 home runs. Hit 16 home runs. And I thought that when you take a look at the July that Biggio had, hitting 417. That's who I voted for as well. That he would be the guy. However, they lean toward the long ball. And Mark McGuire personifies that. And Randy Johnson, despite no run support, was absolutely magnificent. So on the line drive, left center field by Cabrera. Good one. Turns around and admires it. Boy, did that ball jump out of here. Cabrera's sixth home run of the year, and the Expos have grabbed the lead 2-1. to one. Only the seventh home run allowed by Tampany this year. Homer makes it 3-1 Montreal. If you hit a line drive, you can get it out of here. And Cabrera with a pretty lively bat. Hitting number six, driving in runs 31 and 32. And even with the wind blowing in, that one rocketed into left center field. 
So Hermanson stands in with two in, one out, and a 3 1 Expo game. Hermanson was caught looking back in the third inning. And tap misses inside, ball one. The way Hermanson's throwing tonight, you don't want to give these guys too much of a lead. Right now it's two runs. A broken bat roller to the shortstop. Nieves in, up, and across in time. Two men down now to the top of the order. Manny Kevin, Martinez, the batter, he's 0 for 2. Kevin Tappany has done a great job this year keeping the ball in the ballpark. That was only the seventh home run he's allowed. And this is his 20th start. That one could prove costly, and it came from a most unlikely source. The eighth place hitter with only five of them on the year before tonight. So the Cubs will have to come back tonight. 3-1 Expos, a strike to Martinez. Montreal has won just 16 road games all year. That's the least of any team in baseball. Only the Tigers close to them. They've won 17 of 50 games. Montreal had a big win yesterday. They won 10-4. to four. They got nine unearned runs in the fourth inning of that game against the Brewers. How about that day? for Phil Garner's bunch. No balls, two strikes to Martinez. It's outside. The Braves are off tonight. The Mets are beating Milwaukee two to nothing after three. A win by New York ties the National League East race. Phillies are not playing either, I don't believe. They come into tonight's play six games back. It's funny, coming into this game, not one guy on this Montreal team had ever hit a home run off Kevin Tappany. That changed with one pitch. And now Tapp's run at full to Martinez with Michael Barrett waiting on deck. We're in the fifth. Two runs, two hits. A two-run homer by Orlando Cabrera. Out of play. Martinez on his sixth organization, one of them on the minor league level, the Chicago Cubs, as he's made the rounds. But now that they're using Rondell White in left field, thinking that his body will take less of a pounding in left, it opens center for Martinez, and he's trying to make the most of it. 3-2, bouncing ball toward third. And he's got it. The toss across high, but in time, Grace gets down in the bag. And that retires Martinez in the Expos. Two runs, two hits. The two-run Cabrera homer gives them a two-run lead. It's 3-1 after four and a half. Eyes of a puppy dog. Lips made for sin. You're not dreaming. I'm for real. We got a call. Hello. Lewis? Yeah. Lewis. Um. Want to get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom with Southwest Airlines fun fares that begin at $39. You are now free to move about the country. Boy, 
what a gorgeous sunset here in Chicago. Golden skies overhead, and let's take a peek at our Charles Schwab game summary. Cabrera with a two-run homer is sixth in the fifth inning. Sammy Sosa hit number 41 in the first. He leads the major league. Mark Grace just one hit away from 2,000 after his double in the fourth. And Kevin Tampany has given up just seven home runs all year long, but a costly one here tonight. So let's see if the Cubs can pick up a pair here and tie this thing up in the fifth. It'll be Nieves, Gaetti, and then Tappany. 3 1 Expo. And Jose takes a strike. Nothing and one. Shane Andrews in on the grass at third, expecting a Nieves bunt. Swung a line hard left center field on the run. Martinez, he's got it. And there's out number one. Jose hit that ball sharply, but Martinez a good running catch. One man down for Gary Gaetti. Well, the wind blowing in helped Manny Martinez run this one down. Is this held up long enough for him to run under it? And that ball was hit hard. So Gary Gaetti stands in. He popped out to second. Leading off the Cubs third. Three to one Expos. Guy, he looks inside at ball one. A high, lazy fly to right. Vladimir Guerrero comes charging in. Two men down. Here's Kevin Tappany. I think, Steve, you would agree one of the toughest things in baseball to do is to face the same opponent in consecutive starts. Both Tappany and Hermanson having to do that tonight. Well, I think if they hit you hard, then you're going to have to make an adjustment because you know the hitters will. Tappany sends a fly into straightaway center. Martinez again. Three straight flyouts and a very easy inning for Hermanson. Three outs on five pitches. Five innings in the books. Expos three. Cubs one. the right place at the right time. Celebrate from the driver's seat in a new Ford Escort or ZX2. Now during the Ford Authorized Clearance, get 0.9% financing plus $750 cash back on a 99 Escort or ZX2 or choose $1,500 cash back. Celebrate. celebrate in a new set of wheels during the Ford Authorized Clearance at your local Ford store. Dear Shell, my name is Mary Farmer, and I have a question. <clears throat> I've noticed gas stations popping up everywhere. Isn't all gasoline the same? Isn't it at all just marketing? That doesn't just sound like marketing. That doesn't just sound like marketing. <laughs> that sounds like marketing. The secret to being a Cubs game reenactor is authenticity. There are lots of ways to make the games real. Joe, he's hardcore. And there's Julie. She's an old pro. It's in the way you hold your bat or the equipment you wear. For example, the shoes I'm wearing today were actually worn by Cubs Hall of Famer Billy Williams. He never wore them in a game, of course. The Cubs and Expos tomorrow at 7 on Fox Sports Net Chicago Plus. Beautiful night continues here at Wrigley Field. Tomorrow night, it's game two of this four-game set between the Expos and the Cubs. Micah Bowie will make his Cubs debut against Javier Vasquez, who pitched a gem against us up at Olympic Stadium. And you know the butterflies for Mr. Bowie are going to be fluttering tomorrow night. A very impressive young left-handed pitcher will take the mound for the Cubs for the first time tomorrow. You won't want to miss that. Michael Barrett leading things off here in inning number six. Fouls it down the right field line. Expos leading by a pair. Looking for more here in the sixth. 
Barrett scored an unearned run in the first inning on a Nieves error and a Vladimir Guerrero single. Mets have expanded their lead in Milwaukee to five to nothing in the fourth. Little looping fly ball over second. Mickey drifts back. He's got it. And there's out number one. So Barrett's 0 for 3, and here's Wilton Guerrero. Guerrero took over after Vidro suffered a pinched nerve in his foot and had to leave the ball game. Wilton Guerrero flied to left back in the fourth inning. And from the left side, he usually just tries to slap at the ball, so you certainly want to take away the butt. And don't throw him anything slow because he'll take that right down the first base line. Ground ball hit to Mickey. Big Sunday hop on a Monday night. Four pitches, two outs. Well, these hitters very aggressive tonight on both sides. I was going to say, they must have felt like they had long days yesterday and want to move this <laughs> one along. But here's the guy you've got to really be wary of. Vladimir Guerrero, an RBI single tonight. He's also grounded out to third. He looks at the ball inside. National League All-Star is Mr. Guerrero. He reminds me a lot of a very young Sammy Sosa. And that there's really nothing that he can't do. Many times he'll play out of control. Sammy refined his game as he went along so will Vladimir line drive off the glove and Avis in short left he'll try to recover throw to first he got it he got him at first Joe West rings him up Guerrero can't believe it neither can Felipe Alou and Joe West might be seeing a different ball game than everybody else in the ballpark tonight well we got a break it looked like he was safe at first and I think this is the second time that this happened. We'll watch it again. Uh, he's safe. It's not even close. Now put on the bag and the ball got there. And that's, well, Joe is one for three. If you were a major league hitter, he'd make a fortune. Yeah, the Cubs. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Sprint PCS. Experience the clear alternative to cellular today. I hear you have a problem. Yeah, it uh, started a few years ago when they brought in the cellular phones. But lately, you tell me. Yeah, it's cellular. Sprint PCS. They built the only all-digital, all-PCS nationwide network. So now, their calls will be clear. Ma'am. Thank you. Tell others what happened here today. about vision, about that part of imagination which lives outside the lines. It's about focus and the engineering freedom to change everything. It's insight and the flow of original thinking that can revitalize an industry. It's thousands of people visualizing change and one company's way of looking at tomorrow. you see the price. Wards. I love what you've done with the blade. You can't shop smarter than war. Well, folks, Joe West has had a real tough night tonight at first base. He's blown a couple of calls over there. And Jose Nieves is not exactly dazzled with the leather so far tonight. Well, he gets a glove on it, but give him an A for effort. Or an E for effort, because he stayed right with it. And it looks to me like Vladimir at least tied the throw. I thought he was in there. But the Cubs get the benefit of the doubt. Felipe Alou couldn't believe it. But the call stands. And we'll take the break. Down 3-1, top of the order now. And Curtis Goodwin will lead things off. 
If I'm not mistaken, Joe West is one of those umpires who did turn in his resignation and did have it accepted. So one month from today, Joe West may not be umpiring any longer. And he's still hearing it from that Montreal dugout. 2-0 to good one. He's in the midst of a 2-for-37 slide. Goodwin, Mickey, and Sammy here in the top of the or in the bottom of the sixth inning. That's high and away. It's three and one. Game number 103 of the campaign tonight. Three and two. Cubs trying to leapfrog past Milwaukee. The Brewers are down five zip. But the Cubs will have to come back and win tonight to do that. And that would mean we would escape the central cellar. The three two. Lead off walk. The second one of those issued by Dustin Hermanson tonight. And we'll see if Curtis does any running. He hasn't run much, and when he has, he has not had a lot of success. But the Cubs had some success running against Barrett in Montreal. And Hermanson might not be the quickest guy to home plate. So Curtis now two of six in the stolen base department. And the bullpen is going to start to work. Here's Mickey 0 for 2. No sign of movement by Goodwin. And Morandini takes a strike. Again, Andrews in on the grass at third. They're daring the Cub hitters to try to shoot the ball past him over at the hot corner. Fulmer holds the runner at first, of course. Goodwin back standing up. Looks like Steve Klein throwing in the bullpen. He's the lone lefty down there. Probably getting ready for the Grace Rodriguez Reed left-handed threesome. Bad news for the Orioles. Cal Ripken Jr. returned to Baltimore from Oakland. His bad back is acting up again. No balls at a strike. Right through there, an off-speed pitch. 0-2. Ripken to be examined by Orioles team orthopedist Dr. Michael Jacobs. He's one homer shy of 432 hits shy of 3,000. Nothing in two. It's on a play. Will anybody ever break Cal Ripken's consecutive game streak? BJ I wouldn't, I wouldn't think so. has the record. He's got a chance, though, but he's got to play another 15 years, I think, without missing a game. I think his streak is 249 in a row. Nothing in two. Paints the outside corner, perfect pitch. Mickey thought it was low and away. Angel Hernandez says it was good enough, and he has a parting shot for Mickey. And as he heads back to the Cub Dug out for out number one. Five Hermanson strikeouts, and here's Sosa. Whenever you see a catcher drag the ball back over the corner, you pretty much know that he believes it's not a strike. Mickey certainly was convinced it wasn't. But Angel Hernandez had the deciding vote. One for two night for Sosa so far. A laser beam home run into the first row of the left field bleachers. Tied the game with two outs in the bottom of inning number one. That home run number 41 for Sammy. Last year Sosa hit his 41st game on July 28th. That was in the 107th game of the year for the Cubs. So he's four games ahead of his 66 homer pace set a year ago. Hermanson sets and throws a strike. Big difference between Hermanson tonight and what we saw five, six days ago in Montreal. He's been ahead of a lot of hitters tonight. Much more aggressive, much more effective. Goodwin leads, doesn't go, and that one skips up there. Good stop by Barrett. Well, the first part of it was good. 
And then as he hustled after it, I think he hurt his left hand. He looked like that old San Francisco mascot. The San Francisco Crab. As he blocks it, this part's good. Now watch. Trying to get to it, crawling after it, scampering, falling down, getting a face burger for his efforts. And Curtis does not advance. Watch well, it again. And look at Randy Hundley off to our left, filling in for the coach, Ron Sato. He probably likes that technique. I was going to say, I feel for you, Michael. I'm sure he's been in that spot before a time or two. There's Randy. One ball, one strike. High fly ball hit deep toward right, but not deep enough. Vladimir Guerrero under it and has it. And look at that arm. Look at that throw from the right field corner. Two yeah, down. Yeah, that's not the man you're going to challenge. So two men down. And look at this cannon for an arm. One of the greatest throws I ever saw was Dave Parker in the 79 All-Star game in Seattle. Here's Grace. Needs one hit for 2,000 and the crowd on its feet. The ball pops away and Goodwin didn't see it. Well, if you're wondering, one of the reasons why Mark Grace wanted to stay a Cub and why the Cubs really didn't make much of an effort to trade him anywhere. You see the reaction the fans have to Mark Grace knowing he needs just one more hit for 2000. Good one at first, two men down here in the sixth. No pitch. Off speed, fly ball, left center field on the run, right still going. He's got it. And the inning is over. Grace did flirt with that double for number 2000. He'll have to wait one more turn. Nothing doing in the sixth. It's 3 1 Montreal. Blech. What I wouldn't do for a Comiskey Park dog right now. Oh, yeah. What? I'm not good enough. You don't know how close I was to making a big. Uh -oh. You talking to me? Yeah, I'm talking to you, chump. I got an all beef cousin that made it to the majors. Detroit, in fact. Yeah, well, I hate the Tigers. Hey, 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 they don't get me angry. You're messing with the wrong dog. Oh, yeah? Ah, oh, that's gonna leave a mark. Oh, jeez. Mm. Time for a little showdown in Motown. Tomorrow at 5.30 on Fox Sports Net Chicago. Walk over there and I'll take a picture of you. The right? incredible power of Duracell Ultra. Oh, it's lovely, it? It's lovely, isn't it? By the statue. Cameras get faster Ultra. flashes. Pow, pow. Up to 100 more pictures. <laughs> Lovely Duracell Ultra, with a concentrated power force to give more life to your high-tech devices. Oh, yes! Work it, work it. Duracell Ultra, more power, more life. Over the years, a lot of businesses have put their names on one line of trucks. The one that's overall the most powerful line of pickups on the road. The one that was first to offer quad cab versatility. And the first and only full-size pickup to receive J.D. Power & Associates' most appealing award four years running. We understand this name faith. We're pretty fussy about what we put ours on, too. Dodge Ram. The rules have changed. Well, we go to the top of the seventh already. It's 3-1 Montreal the lead. A two-run homer by Orlando Cabrera in the fifth has given Montreal the two-run advantage. Kevin Tampany has only given up seven homers all year. But he's had a real rough spell of it. He hasn't won a game since June 24th. He's lost five straight decisions and has fallen to six and eight on the year. First pitch swing by Fulmer into left. Henry Rodriguez has it. One pitch, one man down. You know, Chip, I've pretty much forgotten what's happened in this one. You think you have a good idea to summarize this? I think I do. In fact, here is our Ford game summary, Steve. Cabrera, the two-run homer in that fifth inning for Montreal. Sammy hit his 41st. Mark Grace needs one hit for 2,000 tonight. And Kevin Tappany, three runs, only two earned, but unfortunately, they all count. Dustin Hermanson's pitched a bit better tonight. And our thanks to our friends at Ford for 
sponsoring our game summary tonight and every night on Fox Sports Net Chicago Plus. Here's White. One ball, no strikes. And a looping fly ball into right. Sammy on the run, can't get it, plays it on a hop. White big turn around first. And the throw pops away from Nieves, but not far enough for an advance. So White has his second hit of the game. He was one for ten against the Cubs coming into this series tonight. If you're Felipe Alou, as we watch White reach out, just dump it in front of Sammy. But Felipe Alou here. You try to get Andrews concentrating a little more, and it's a good situation for a hit and run. Let's see if they've got White going. White four out of six in the stolen base department, and Andrews takes strike one. He's bounced to second and lined to second. Again, we'd like to see how Nieves turns the double play in this ball game, just to have a feel for his game. He's had a bit of a case of the yips with the leather tonight. Breaking ball, strike two. Well, that's to be expected. Not his major league debut, but his first major league start. Oh, and two to Andrews. Strike three call of the outside corner. Three strikeouts for Tampany in the game. And here's the arch villain so far, Orlando Cabrera. Oh, you call him out there, there's going to be a few more strikeouts. So one more out, and we'll get to hear Michael Finley of the Dallas Mavericks conduct our seventh inning stretch tonight. Michael, the native of Chicago, one of the more exciting players in the NBA. It would be a bad time for a pitch out call because you don't want to lead off with the pitcher. So many times they'll run, and if you get them, you lead off with the eighth hitter. Very good lead, but no movement, and strike one call. Pete McCannon will flash the signs given to him by Felipe Alou. Expos three, Cubs one. Montreal went 0 and 6 here last year. They're trying to change that in a big hurry tonight. Game one of four against the Expos tonight. I couldn't believe how quickly that ball got out of the park that Cabrera hit. It was back in the fifth inning. A one strike pitch. Line toward the right center field gap. Sammy on the run. Plays it safe on a hop. Streaking toward third is White. He'll make it without a play. First and third with two out. And Hermanson a chance to help himself. With the Expos already in front by a pair. Cabrera gets a slider, dumps it into right center. And Sammy cuts it off. Now Dustin Hermanson, not one of those pitchers that hits real well. He's just two for 36. He's 0 for 2 tonight with a strikeout and a ground out. Somewhat surprising because those guys from Kent State always hit the ball well. I'm sure he's just hitting in tough luck. Yeah, because the other guy's throwing. The pitch <laughs> is a ball low. If they put it up on a tee, he'd be like Babe Ruth, I'm sure. And when they held the 0 for 34 in my first year, I asked McCovey as he was taping his bat. <laughs> loan me a little of that tape because I must be doing something wrong with my taping. He said, well, I'll loan it to you, but the best thing you could do is tape the pitcher's arm to his leg. He was a kind man, wasn't he? Well, he, he saw my stroke that first That's year. Enough. Despite the fact, Chip, it was line drive after line drive. Well, there's no doubt. I mean, I saw the highlights, I or just, in your case, the whole life. I just couldn't get a hit. One ball, one strike to Hermanson. Another one of those tap in. Turn it back over to the offense. Two hits here in the seventh. Looks to me like one Montreal game. Dustin might have a little problem with the breaking ball. Right back to the mound. Tampany spears it, throws the first inning over. 
Nothing doing for Montreal. Here comes Michael Finley of the Mavericks with our seventh inning stretch. I'm Randy Walker, coach of the Wildcats. It's the seventh inning. I'm leading Wrigley Field in song. A one, a two, go you Northwestern. The compact pickup J.D. Power & Associates ranks best in initial quality. A Consumer's Digest Best Buy. One of car and driver's 10 best. Building the new Dodge has been very rewarding. And now, owning a new Dodge is even more rewarding. During our summer clearance, this Dodge Intrepid, a two-time 10 best winner, continues its winning ways with a $1,000 cash allowance. It's very simple, really. Dodge gets awards, you get rewards. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you for this limited time offer. Catch all the Cubs action right from your computer with the Chicago Cubs website at www.cubs.com. It's all at your fingertips. Live play-by-play, up-to-the-minute stats, daily game notes, online access to Cubs tickets, and much more. Also, listen to the radio broadcast of the games live, brought to you by broadcast.com. It's everything you've always wanted to know about your Chicago Cubs, 24 hours a day, every day. Visit the Cubs website today at www.cubs.com. Spend the day at Wrigley Field without leaving your home. It's 3-1 Montreal as we head to the bottom half of the seventh inning. Chip Carey, Steve Stone, Michael Finley, local boy, done good. Yeah. With our seventh inning stretch, Michael, it's a great pleasure to meet you. Good to see you tonight. Nice to be back in Chicago, I guess. I know this is the hometown. Yeah, it's always good to be back in Chicago. Training camp's right around the corner, huh? Yep, yeah, getting anxious, just trying to get my body and mentally getting ready to go into play. Henry Rodriguez set to lead things off here for the Cubs. He's 0 for 1 with a strikeout. And a walk, and he looks outside, and ball one. Well, it says here on the sheet, Michael, that as a high school senior, you won the opportunity to play one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jordan. How'd that work out? Well, it was um, the local uh, television station here uh, with Johnny Morris asked me, did I want to play against Michael Jordan in a one-on-one -on -one, uh, situation? And luckily for me, I said, yeah, and it was like a dream come true for me. Did you humiliate him? Well, I scored one time on the high school. That was my bit of a humiliation for him. But he uh, ultimately won the game. But I was going to say, I'm sure every time the Bulls saw you uh, on that NBA circuit, he reminded you that you're not scoring against me again tonight. Right, right. He, I think he took it kind of personal from that day forward. Funny how that works. Yeah. Two balls and a strike to Henry Rodriguez and way outside, three and one. How are things going down in Dallas? I know Don Nelson, the head coach, has son Donnie very well. Two great basketball guys. You've been rebuilding for a while, but these have to be exciting times in Texas. Oh, yeah, I think it is. I mean, right now we're in a growing process, a really young team, and just trying to uh, get some respect around the league and just try to keep winning ball games. Is Don going to have you play in center? He has everybody playing in a strange position at one time or another during well, the season. Be believe it or not, I don't put that past. So <laughs> if I'm at center one game, hey. Henry hits it high in the air into right center field. Martinez calls everybody off. He's got it shy of the track. And there's out number one here in the seventh inning. That was a wrong night to hit that one because normally that would have been into the seats with the wind blowing straight in. And the wind is dying down somewhat, but still it knocked it down. Henry hit it way up high. And Martinez calling for it all the way. So Jeff Reed stands in with the bases empty and one out again. Montreal leading 3-1. Our guest Michael Finley, superstar with the Dallas Mavericks. And that's got to be a real thrill for you to achieve that dream of playing in the NBA with the world's greatest athletes day in, day out. Yeah, I mean, it's always been a dream of mine to uh, make it to the NBA and to 
finally uh, let my dream come true. I've just been enjoying it day in and day out. No balls, two strikes. How quickly until you think that Dallas team can try to accomplish what your hometown team, the Bulls, have done so well in past years, and that's get that NBA championship banner and ring? Well, I mean, the Bulls was an unusual situation. They had it such a, I think, one of the best teams in NBA history. But for us, we just got to take it one year at a time, continue to improve uh, on our roster. And you never know, our day might come sooner than later. Are the fans in Dallas as rabid about their basketball as the fans we saw in San Antonio this year? Well, they had a lot more to cheer about in San Antonio yeah, they this certainly year. Did. But Dallas fans uh, are great. Uh, they're just looking for an opportunity to cheer a little more. And hopefully, I can give them that opportunity. No balls, two strikes to Jeff Reed as he bats with one out here in the seventh inning. I used to do the games in Orlando. You used to drive us nuts. Uh, Coming down the lane with those big tomahawk dunks flying through the air all over the place. Nobody could stop you down in Central and South Florida. The 0 2 pitch. Rounder, foul pass first. What's it like playing against guys like Penny Hardaway and Glenn Rice and Kobe Bryant every day? Well, I think it's just uh, it's the ultimate challenge for me to know that each and every night you have to go out and, and put out 110% effort. And that's what I like about the NBA. I mean, each night you have to come out and play hard or you'll be embarrassed. Nothing in two to lead. It's in the dirt. And so many kids, Michael, want to step into your shoes and become NBA players. What advice would you give to a 10, 11, 12-year-old kid who's starting to play competitive basketball for the first time what do you think is the most important thing for that youngster to do to try to make it as a professional athlete well to always remember it's just a game it's to always have fun when you play the game but don't let uh, making it professionally be your, your number one goal I mean education has always been my number one goal growing up and I think it's what helped me propel myself into the NBA just having that type of uh, Mitchell uh, state two balls two strikes to read I just missed you ready for a an 82 game season you only had 50 last year. Oh yeah it's going to be a big change for us but 82 games is more more like it. Last year was three games and four nights and this year to be two games and maybe four nights. So that one day will definitely help us. Reed hits another fly ball high in the air to deep center. Again Martinez an easy play. He's got it and there are two men out. Cubs getting good swings against Hermanson but they're hitting it a little too high right now. Unfortunately this is the kind of night where you're trying to hit line drives. But Hermanson has thrown a lot of high fastballs and at 94 95 miles an hour you're going to get a lot of high fly balls and right now at the 96 pitch mark but still with pretty good stuff. He's retired nine of the last ten men he's faced only a walk to Curtis Goodwin as snapped his string and here's Jose Nieves who is 0 for 2 tonight. Michael have you always made your summer home in Chicago? Yeah for the most part. I, uh, my trainers here uh, Tim Grover. And it's it's high. high drive deep toward left right at the warning track. Martinez comes over and Rondell puts it away and that retires the side in the seventh. Michael Finley the visit was brief. We enjoyed it. Right, Congratulations. Good luck the rest of the way. And go Mavericks. All right. Thank you. All right. Michael Finley of Dallas. It's 3 1 Montreal after 7 for good deal. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. But on October 31st, Southwest Airlines will take off and fly to an exciting new destination, Hartford Springfield. So get ready for October 31st when we finally... You are now free to move about the country. find everything you need for bed and bath at Ward's, but you won't find values like this anywhere else. Dial for the bed, dial for the bed, you can't shop smarter than Ward.
Jet, Chicago, home of the Cubs. As we go to the eighth inning, let's take a look at tonight's Dodge Drive of the game. Only one of these tonight, unfortunately, for the Cubs. And Sammy Sosa hit his 41st, a bullet. That coming in the first inning. The Cubs only have one other hit, but Sammy is our Dodge Drive of the game. So Tappany's got to navigate the top of the Montreal order here in the eighth inning. Martinez, Barrett, and Wilton Guerrero. He's down three to one in tonight's game. And he knows that this is going to be his last inning. So whatever he's got left in the tank, he should bring it out because he's due up second in the eighth. That's downstairs. Two balls, no strikes. Pretty low pitch count for Tampany tonight. The Expos have been jumping on the first or second pitch most of the night. They do it on the third this time. The Evis. Good arm throws out Martinez. One away in the top of the eighth. Martinez 0 for 4 tonight. Let's see Kevin Tampany get stronger as the game moves along. But down by a pair, this is going to be his swan song. And he's thrown the ball pretty well. He's made the one mistake to Cabrera. And other than that, an unearned run in the first, and that's been it. One ball, no strikes to Barrett. Mets outfielder Ricky Henderson strained his right hip. Injured while running out a double in the third inning. Remained in the game. Then was replaced by Sean Dunstan. That would be a big loss for the Mets. As Ricky Henderson has been just unbelievable. He played a big part in the Mets beating the Cubs five of six games. He seemed to be in the middle of most everything. Congratulations to our old pal Luis Gonzalez at his 30 game hitting streak earlier in the year. Tonight rewarded with a contract extension. Terms were not disclosed but. Gonzalez in the final year of a two year contract with the Diamondbacks. He is one of the real nice guys in the game. So congratulations to Luis. We'll be able to congratulate him up close and personal in just a few days as the Diamondbacks come to town. Two and two to Barrett and he stays alive. We figure the type of year that he had this year he deserves. A contract extension. And he could probably use a little more cash. He and his wife have triplets. So congratulations to Luis on and off the field. There's a drive down the left field line by Barrett. But he yanked it foul. And the count remains two and two. Diamondbacks ahead of the Giants by two and a half games. Arizona at 59 and 47. Division shapes up that way with the Giants in the Bank One ballpark later on. And San Diego starting to fall out of it after a 14-game winning streak. They've fallen on hard times. Call for some offense. Two and two to the catcher Michael Barrett. Line to the right side out of play. Another big crowd here tonight. The Cubs continue to draw amazingly well. Over 36,000 on average. This is our 46th home game. And the Cubs have already drawn 1.6 million fans. Ground ball to a third. What a backhand stop by Grady there. Four across in time, two down. I don't think it's a coincidence, Steve, but when you get regular playing time, you play better. And that's exactly what has happened to Gary Gaetti. A lot of people don't realize that it's not only hitting where you need rhythm, it's also fielding. And if you play the position a lot more, you're going to look a lot better. In the case of Gary Gaetti, defensively, he's looked terrific the last three or four days. Two up, two down now for Wilton Guerrero. He is 0 for 2. Taking over for Vidro. And Wilton takes a strike. That ball slapped toward left. And a former 
Maxwell and Rodriguez can't corral it as it floats into the seats. Rooftops full tonight. The ballpark full tonight. Another night game tomorrow as Micah Bowie makes his Cub debut against Javier Vazquez. You won't want to miss out on that excitement tomorrow. Ground ball right back up the middle into center field for Guerrero. A two out base hit brings up his brother Vladimir here with a chance to really make it tough. The Cubs only two hits tonight. And that one number six for the Expos. Wilton goes right back up the middle. A hard hit ball. Flashing right by Kevin Tampany. And the man you didn't want to see come to bat with anybody on base is doing just that. Guerrero, an RBI single in the first. That was an unearned run as Barrett had reached on. The Avis is fielding error. One ball, no strikes. Guerrero just 23 years old. Just think of the kind of numbers this guy could put up if he plays 15, 16, 17 years in the bigs. And of course stays healthy. One and one. Well, this is where you want to go when you're trying to strike him out. You want to stay upstairs. The pitch that's called higher than high, he will swing at it. I think the Dodgers wish they had signed this kid. Yeah, they had a shot. They chose Wilton. The Expos are happy they did. Now you've got two strikes on him. Back to that high fastball that he threw by him on strike one. And I think maybe Joliet Jeff is going out to mention that to Kevin Tappany. slugger and Vladimir certainly is that he doesn't strike out very much in fact in 386 at bats he's fanned 39 times and walked 38 times well he likes to swing the bat and he will make contact I think you can get him upstairs one two that one missed letter high. Two balls, two strikes. Approaching the 9 o'clock hour here in Chicago. Montreal leading the Cubs 3-1. Steve Stone, Chip Carey, our entire Fox Sports Net Chicago crew. The pitch. That's foul off his foot, and he's down for the count. A foul ball off the lower extremities of Vladimir Guerrero, and that did not feel good. He wears that pad on the left shin. And I think that one might have gotten him on the ankle, which is not really protected. Maybe the instep. Let's take a peek. And maybe higher. It's on the left knee. It's above the shin guard. And he does this a lot. That's why he wears that shin guard. But Ooh. this one hit right off the left knee. try to shake it off. Crowd of 37,598 being entertained by Gary Presley on the Blue Field Oregon. And Guerrero shakes it off, gets a nice ovation, and stands back in with a count of two and two. You wouldn't think they'd want to take him in, put a little ice on it, make sure that it's okay? I was kind of hoping. They're going to go with the fastball upstairs. Get it up, up, Kevin. And we'll go back to first where Wilton Guerrero is standing. Cubs trail it by two. Gaetti, then a pinch hitter, then Curtis Goodwin in the eighth. Outs are getting scarce for the Cubs. The pitch loads the count three and two.
Three balls, two strikes. There goes Wilton. The pitch is low and away. Ball four puts runners first and second now for Fulmer. So Tampany gives up his first walk of the game. It's here in the eighth with two outs. And now you really have to be careful for Fulmer has been a deadly hitter in the last couple of weeks. You're going to get the bullpen up and going once again. And obviously they just as soon Kevin get out of this one because he is due up second. And they are going to take him down as Steve Rain gets up for the second time. Fulmer 0 for 3. Not anymore. He's one for four and he rips it into the corner. That's going to score Wilton Guerrero. Vladimir Guerrero. He's going to round third. The relay won't be made. It's a double for Fulmer. And Montreal has a 5 1 lead. Well, Pete McCannon was holding up Vladimir Guerrero. And uh, thought that the throw was going to be able to get him. McCannon thought that there was no way he could score, but Guerrero ran right through the stop sign. And Fulmer drives and runs. 23 and 24. He rips this ball with the high grass. It doesn't go to the wall. But Guerrero is one of the fastest men in this league. And he's off to the races. So apparently he didn't hurt that knee too badly as he runs through the stop sign and scores. That's good news for the Expos. Bad news for the Cubs who are now down 5 to 1. And here's Rondell White, 2 out of 3. All this trouble coming after two harmless ground outs by Martinez and Barrett. A single, a walk, and a double. And the Expos have a four-run advantage. And the Cubs drop two out of three to the Expos north of the border. Montreal, only 16 road wins, is on their way to their 17th. And their first win at Wrigley Field since 1997. Nothing in two. That one hit in the air. Deep toward right. Sammy on his horse. Reaches up. Has it. And the inning is over. Two runs. Two hits. One man left. But Montreal adds to their lead. It's 5-1. Heading to the bottom of the eighth. Over the years, a lot of businesses have put their names on one line of trucks. The one that's overall the most powerful line of pickups on the road. The one that was first to offer quad cab versatility. And the first and only full-size pickup to receive J.D. Power & Associates' most appealing award four years running. We understand this name fate. We're pretty fussy about what we put ours on, too. Now get a $1,000 cash allowance on Dodge Ram during the Dodge Summer Clip. This is a CLTV News Update. Good evening, I'm Greg Prather. We'll return to Wrigley in a moment, but first, here are a few stories making headlines this evening. Top draft pick, Cade McNown, settles on contract terms with the Bears today. He made the announcement earlier before leaving for Platteville. McNown will reportedly be eligible to make up to $22 million over the first five years of his contract. The Chicago Police Department has been asked to open or reopen more than 30 cases of alleged police torture. A four-page letter was delivered to Police Superintendent Terry Hiller today. It was signed by community leaders and public officials, including Congressman Bobby Rush and Danny Davis. Now I'm time for a quick check on the weather. Here's Tim McGill. Tim. The only way to follow up a great Monday is with a great Monday night. We're going to have that tonight. Partly cloudy, cool and dry. Throw open the windows. 57 in the outlying areas tonight. 67 along the lakefront. Tomorrow, not bad either. A mix of sun and clouds. The clouds build up a bit. A little warmer. 84 for a high. Let's look at your weather. Now back to Greg. Thanks, Tim. Now back to Wrigley Field or the rest of tonight's Cubs game. Chicago Cubs baseball is brought to you in part by Southwest Airlines. With fares so low, you have the freedom to go places. Heineken, it's all about beer, Heineken. And by Ford cars built to last. Ford trucks built Ford tough. Montreal's added to their lead. It's 5-1. to one. We head to the bottom of the eighth inning. Gary Gaetti will lead it off. Then Manny Alexander will pinch it for Kevin Tappany. Then we'll go to the top of the order. Two changes for the Expos defensively. James Mouton takes over for Vladimir Guerrero in right. Mike Mordecai, Mordecai takes over for Wilton Guerrero at second base. 
Dustin Hermanson has been terrific. First pitch swinging Gaetti. Ground ball toward third. Long toss across by Andrews in time. One pitch, one out. Seven straight Cubs have been retired into the eighth inning. Andy Alexander has done a very good job off the bench. In fact, he's hitting 500 at 9 for 18. And it's off the bench that he will come. Pinch hitting for Kevin Tampany. So Tampany goes eight. Gives up five runs, four earned on seven hits. He walks one, he fans three. And, and he's Cubs, in line to drop his sixth in a row. And the Cubs trailing by four. And outs are down to five. And the lead is four. Here's Manny. Hermanson has made the adjustment. As we told you earlier, Steve, you would agree that's the toughest thing to do in baseball for a starting pitcher when you get... Whacked around. Line drive by Manny. A pinch hit once again. He's over 500 in a pinch. Hermanson hasn't made many mistakes. In fact, that's only the third Cub hit of the night. And the top of the order comes to calling and Curtis Goodwin. This looks like a slider that just stays up out over the plate. And Manny, who has been just terrific off the bench, delivers again. So Curtis Goodwin mired in a two for 38 slide will be the batter. Might to get a couple guys on here because the middle of the order is lurking close by. Activity begins in the Montreal bullpen. Klein is up. A right hander gets up too. Mr. Moda or quasi. As we called him so affectionately up in Montreal. And he was a hard throwing right hander that's made the transition from a middle infielder to a pitcher. Now Bobby Quire goes to the mound. He wants to give that bullpen a chance to get loose. Hermanson is not a guy that leaves too many games early, but he's also not a guy that completes many games. And so here he is, finds himself with one out in the eighth inning. And this year, his longest outing had been, before tonight, seven innings. And he accomplished that feat three times. Remaining a brief one. Bobby Cuellar back to the dugout. And here we go with good one. Curtis could use a hit. So could the Cubs. We need more than one, though. As it's 5-1 in the eight. Bouncing ball right back to the mound. Hermanson doesn't even hesitate. Run six, double clutch three. In time, double play, and the inning is over. No runs, one hit. The Cubs make three outs on three pitches. How about that? 5-1 as we go to the ninth. Draft beer is an extension of the brewery brought to you. And what I mean by that is beer in its most perfect condition. It's actually beer from a finishing tank at the brewery that is put into a keg. It's then kept refrigerated all the way to your local bar or restaurant. The result is a taste and a drinkability you'll find in no other beer. Draft beer is beer at its best. And there's nothing better than an ice cold Budweiser Draft. Look inside a Dodge Ram conversion van and you'll find a virtual home on wheels. But take away features like the video system, captain's chairs, and plush interior, and you'll find the remarkable Dodge Ram van. With a powerful Magnum V8 and strong unibody construction. After all, even a home on wheels should be built on a solid foundation. And with a $2,000 cash allowance, you can start construction right away. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you. Get to Sears National Auto Sale for amazing deals on tires, wheels, batteries, and more. All Bridgestone tires are on sale, every size, in stock, in special order. So make tracks to Sears, your smart stop for tires and batteries. The secret to being a Cubs game reenactor is authenticity. There are lots of ways to make the games real. Joe, he's hardcore. And there's Julie. She's an old pro. It's in the way you hold your bat or the equipment you wear. For example, the shoes I'm wearing today were actually worn by Cubs Hall of Famer Billy Williams. He never wore them in a game, of course. The Cubs and Expos tomorrow at 7 on Fox Sports Net Chicago Plus.
Beautiful night in Chicago, and our producer of Cubs Baseball on Fox Sports Net Chicago is Bob Albrecht. Our director is Dave Turner. The associate producer is Joe Corneo. Our stage manager, the lovely and talented Kathy Kerr. Our production manager is Moheen Ramsey, and the executive producer is Dan Lafferty. Steve Stone, Chip Carey at the ballpark. It's 5-1 Expos, and Steve Rain on to work the top of the ninth. Andrews 0 for 3 leads things off and he ropes it back. Mark McGuire has hit number 41 tonight. As has Sammy Sosa. I think that's the 34th time they've hit a homer on the same day. In fact, for McGuire, it's number 498 of his career. That's the milestone that gets you into the Hall of Fame, that 500 mark. Not that he would have too much difficulty getting in anyway. Big Mac and Sammy again tied. Joe West will be the home plate umpire tomorrow night. Stands no swing. It's two and two. Steve Reed, another one of those Cub youngsters, who will get a chance to audition for a spot in the Cubs pen. And very good numbers in double A. And he strikes out Andrew here in the ninth. This one looked to be a fork ball. And Andrew is no match for that. Steve had it one save in three games at Iowa. Had 24 saves and a 159 ERA at Double A West Tennessee. Here's Cabrera. He has a two run homer tonight, also a single. He's two out of three. into center field and hangs up for Curtis. He makes the side saddle 360 spinning catch. And there are two men down. That ball was hit right on the button by Cabrera. And Dustin Hermanson will hit for himself. Here's the guy that's in his 52nd start over the last two years. And he has completed a grand total of one game. So he's going to have an opportunity to try it again here tonight. He's going to go through two, three, and four in the ninth, but he does have the four-run lead. Vasquez had a complete game against us up in Montreal. Dan Adams pitched real well, too, and luckily for us, we'll miss him. Dan Smith, I beg your pardon, is the man who pitched so well against us for this Expo team. The pitch is outside to Hermanson. It's two and one. In fact, it was Hermanson. A lone expo to get clobbered by the Cubs up in Olympic Stadium. But he has more than righted the ship. Only one run, three hits allowed here tonight. Well, this is how he threw last year when he was 14 and 11 with a 313 ERA. But he hasn't won in about three months. And you can bet he wasn't throwing like he's throwing tonight because he has been brilliant. Strength recall right down the middle. Rain works a one, two, three, nine. So it's Dustin Hermanson against the two, three, four spots in the Cub order. He'll try to shut us down. He's got the five, one lead after eight and a half. Eyes of a puppy dog, which made first sin. You're not dreaming. I'm for real. We got a call. Hello. Lewis? Yeah. Lewis. Um. Want to get away? Southwest has your ticket to freedom with Southwest Airlines fun fares that begin at $39. You are now free to move about the country. The compact pickup J.D. Power & Associates ranks best in initial quality. A Consumer's Digest Best Buy. One of car and driver's 10 best. Building the new Dodge has been very rewarding. And now, owning a new Dodge is even more rewarding. During our summer clearance, this Dodge Intrepid, a two-time 10 best winner, continues its winning ways with a $1,000 cash allowance. It's very simple, really. Dodge gets awards. You get rewards. See the friendly Dodge dealer near you for this limited-time offer. Thank <laughs> you. 
Early round action. He can still play it out. What's this? Oh, he should look to the caddy for advice. Oh, oh my. Oh, well, that will cost him a stroke. Fox Sports Net brings you early round action as the PGA Tour's best shoot it out at Warwick Hills. First round coverage of the Buick Open, Thursday at 4 Eastern, 1 Pacific. <laughs> the job Dustin Hermanson has turned in tonight one run only three hits allowed and he's got a chance to complete it tonight and that would be a real milestone for him this is his 80th major league start he completed one game in each of his first two years and he has yet to complete a game this year but he's knocking at the door as you can see he's been just brilliant and he is our Heineken player of the game one run just a Sosa home run in eight innings He's given up just three hits. Well, one of the surprising things about this Montreal team of late has been their starting pitching. The last nine games, they're four and three as a starting group with an ERA just above two runs a game. Their starters of late have really matured and have come along very well. Their bats have been good enough tonight, too, on a windy, blustery evening. They lead 5-1 with three outs to get, and Mickey Morandini will lead things off. Mickey is 0 for 3. And right down the middle for a strike. Hermanson tried to snap a seven-game losing streak. Kevin Tampany has lost five in a row. And Mickey down to his last strike, 0-2. Micah Bowie goes tomorrow night, his Cub debut. And we'll have it for you right here on Fox. A little looper over third will reach the seats. It's one and two. Mickey has broken his bat, so he'll go back and get another one. Hopefully one with a hit in it. He's hitless tonight. I'm anxious to see Micah Bowie tomorrow night because that's another look at part of the Cubs future. A left-hander with such a great strikeout to walk ratio in the minor leagues. Supposed to have a real good overhand breaking ball and the ability to spot his fastball. One and two to Mickey. Squid right back up the middle. He beats it on infield hit. And that's a ball that Cabrera had to take and I think there was a lack of communication between Cabrera and Mordecai. Because if Cabrera cuts it off, you got a chance. And they're talking it over right now. There's no chance at all for Mordecai at deep second base. And I think that might be it for Dustin Hermanson, but we'll see. It's a play that he should have made. Well, Hermanson's red hot. I mean, he's looking out at his two middle infielders, slapping that ball very animatedly into his glove. And now Bobby Cuellar out to talk things over. This will give the right-hander a couple of more tosses. In that Montreal pen. The leadoff man on for the Cubs here in the ninth. The Cubs are 5-45 and 45 this year when trailing entering the ninth inning. Sammy Sosa's accounted for the Cubs' lone run tonight. Ball one misses outside. Mark Grace will have his opportunity to collect hit number 2,000 coming up next. Well, if Hermanson doesn't get Sosa, it's going to be Klein against Grace. The pitch. Evens the count. Montreal is 33 and 3 when leading after 8. It's a very steep uphill climb for the Cubs here in the ninth, but a good start. Morandini aboard, nobody out. One ball, one strike to Sammy. And he's ahead in the count, two and one with Grace, Rodriguez, 
And perhaps Reed waiting next. The Cubs have Blouser, Hill, Santiago from the right side on the bench. Tyler Houston available from the left side. We've already used Manny Alexander, and he has come through with a pinch hit. That was in the eighth. The 2 1. Ground ball hit to the left side. Andrews flips to Mordecai Juan. Relay to first, two double play, second in as many innings. And there are two men down in the ninth inning. 5 4 3 around the horn, and Grace. One more crack at 2,000 here tonight. the pitch is low ball one everybody on their feet wanting to be a part of what could be a Mark Grace milestone here tonight the 1 0 is 2 0 in the zone. This is the most hittable pitch that there is. 3-1. Swan line drive. There it is. Number 2,000 for Mark Grace. in a year that's going to see three men perhaps reach 3,000 hits. Maybe Gracie a chance to get to 3,000 too if he can prolong his career another six or seven years. So he's aboard with two men out. A milestone for Grace tonight at Wrigley Field against Montreal. And it's Steve Klein to come in to face Henry Rodriguez with two outs in the ninth inning. Grace's first big league hit May 2nd of 88 against Jimmy Jones of the Padres. Hit number 1,000 against Ben Rivera of Philadelphia in 1993. 
So congratulations, Gracie. Here's Henry. One ball, no strikes. A high pop. And out of play. What a feeling that has to be for a professional athlete to receive that kind of ovation. You know what that's like. 125 ball games, the Cy Young, you pitched in the World Series. It has to be spine tingling. Ripped into right field. It'll drop for a hit. Two on, two out. Well, for Mark Grace to have done it all in one uniform is a special feeling. And then to get an opportunity to do it here at home. It's even a more special feeling for him. As Henry Rodriguez keeps things alive against Steve Klein, the Cubs refusing to go down without a fight. They've got three singles here in the ninth inning. That match, their total through eight innings. And now Benito Santiago will come on and pinch it for Jeff Reed. going to do it for Klein. He goes zero innings, gives up a hit. So as Santiago is announced, Montreal goes to its pen once again, and it's their right-hand closer. You get Urbina. He'll come on and try to nail it down in the ninth. Comes down 5-1, but two on, two out. Back in a flash. Behind the show. Each week, Bulls Sox Underground takes you behind the scenes for a whole new look at the Bulls and White Sox and Tom Waddles leading the charge. Need I say more? Bulls Sox Underground. Go behind the games and see what goes on when the fans go home. Bulls Sox Underground, Sundays at 11.30 on Fox Sports Net Chicago. One of the best closers in the National League now has an opportunity for a save. It would be number 22, and it's Ugath Urbina. He's 5 and 4, ERA 399, on for the 47th time. Looking for save number 22. 66 strikeouts in 49 and two thirds innings. And he is one hard throwing hombre. There were some around baseball who thought this was a guy that maybe could have been traded at the deadline. Montreal trying to pair payroll as they have been for so many years. Decided to keep Urbina. Well, the only way that they would have parted with who get Urbina was to get a ton in return. Well, to get one player they could use right now and two top of the line prospects that would be ready next year. And nobody was willing to pay the real high price that Jim Beatty, the general manager, would have extracted one of the game's real good closers. So it's up to Tyler to keep the ball game alive. If he can, Glenn Allen Hill would hit next. Two outs, two on, five on Expos. First pitch hacking, fouled straight back. Nothing and one by Houston. Tyler, two for 20 as a pinch hitter. 249 overall. And 22 for his last 127 in 47 games. No balls and a strike. Right down. Limit 0 and 2. You know you're slumping when you swing at the bad ones and take the good ones. And now the Cubs down to their last strike. 5 1 Montreal. One strike away from winning for just the 17th time on the road. The 0 2. He almost went around. It's one and two. Dustin Hermanson trying to snap a seven game losing streak. He pitched very, very well. Kevin Tampany made one mistake early. That was the Orlando Cabrera home run ball. And in 
until the ninth. Only three hits by the Cubs. The one two. Ripped. Foul. And he may have broken his bat. I think he did. That's something Urbina can do. He can get in on those hands and bust the lumber with the best of them. Well, after Mickey broke his bat, he came through with a base hit. Maybe the same luck for Tyler. Last win for Montreal here, August 23rd of 97. They were blanked here. Six wins for the Cubs, none for Montreal last year. Yankees have beaten Toronto tonight. Jays fall six games out of the AL East. Boston fell at home to Cleveland, so a profitable night for New York in the American League. The one-two from Urbina to Houston. Struck him out looking, and the ball game's over. Urbina comes in, throws four pitches, and picks up save number 22. And the Montreal Expos, for the first time since late August of 97, have beaten the Cubs at Wrigley Field. Final score, five to one in game one of this four-game series. Felipe Alou's been getting some good starting pitching the last 10 games. He got more of it tonight, and Dustin Hermanson was the story for the Expos. And the Cubs abused Hermanson in Montreal, but it was a different Dustin Hermanson tonight. He was much more aggressive. The Cubs managed just five hits and one run off him. He was terrific. And the Expos played a good, solid game and kept the woes of the Cubs going here at home. Just one and three on their longest home stand of the year. So for the Expos, five runs, seven hits, no errors. For the Cubs, one run, six hit, one error. Dustin Hermanson snaps a seven-game losing streak. His record now four and ten. Kevin Tappany falls to six and nine on the year. And Urbina picks up save number 22 on the year. And the Expos win for only the 17th time on the road. They win it five to one, the final score. For my partner, Steve Stone, Chip Carey saying goodnight from Wrigley Field. Again, our final, Expos five, Cubs one. Our next Cub game on Fox Sports Net Chicago will be tomorrow night at seven o'clock. Game two against the Expos. Mike Bowie makes his Cub debut against Javier Vazquez. Join us at seven o'clock. For our entire crew, this is Chip Carey. Say goodnight from Wrigley Field. You've been watching Cubs baseball on Fox Sports Net Chicago. Four, 37 feet high and as we said earlier that netting 23 feet high and it's a it's, it's a very intimidating presence when you're standing in that batter's box it's so close you can see it in your peripheral vision as you're facing the pitcher and many right-handed hitters and left-handed hitters as well change their swing when they come into Fenway Park to try to take advantage of that wall they finally got around to announcing Maglio Ordonia's out in right field and there's a look at the leadoff man after the special CBS presentation, the Miss Teen USA pageant, live CBS next. Live from Shreveport, Bossier, Louisiana, it's the 17th annual Miss Teen USA pageant. Come on, come on. Here we go, here we go.
Jesse Maria Parker. Arizona, Danielle Dembski. Arkansas, Sarah Moody. California, Marianne Kennedy. Come on, come on. Colorado, Morgan O'Murray. Here we go, here we go. Connecticut, Bethany McLean. of Columbia, Shelby Braxton Brooks. Come on, come on! Florida, Michelle Schmotzer. Georgia, Keely Wright. Here we go, here we go! Hawaii, Ariana Sayu. Idaho, Kimberly Weibel. <laughs> Illinois, Amber Dusak. Teresa Moberg. Kansas, Grace Shibley. You got it! Kentucky, Lexi Kemper. Louisiana, Sarah Thornhill. Michelle Beaulieu. Maryland, Cozy Roy. Let's talk to him. Massachusetts, Jill Lynn Donahue. Michigan, Sarah Dusendang. Go, 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 go. Minnesota, Laura Beth Fryer. Mississippi, Allison Bloodworth. Missouri, Andrea Elliott. Ladies and gentlemen, from MTV's Total Request Live, your host, Carson Daly. Thank you for that awesome introduction, and thanks to the amazing Riding Glide Bicycle Stunt Team, and how about the Lamar Dance Theater? Awesome. And of course, the 51 stars of our show, welcome to the 17th Annual Miss Teen USA Pageant. 51 teens from the 50 states and the District of Columbia, each one a walking, talking, living music video. This is my first time in Shreveport, close here, and I gotta say, this place rocks. And it's only getting better. On the show tonight, Louisiana native and teen superstar, Britney Spears. And perhaps the hottest group in the world, In Sync. It's a great night, so let's get to it, you've met half. Here's the rest of the 1999 Teen USA delegates. Montana, Raylene Miller. Nebraska, Kylie Kepke. Nevada, Tristan Walters. Go, 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 go. New Hampshire, Kristen Thurston. New Jersey, Nicole Gullis. Just wave your hands in the air. New Mexico, Alina Ogle. New York, Morgan Mahalik. Stephanie. 
Anthony Holt. North Dakota, Natalie Larson. Ohio, Erica Moody. Oklahoma, Ashley Bowen. Oregon, Tracy Hackenmiller. Pennsylvania, Christina Sindrich. Rhode Island, Jody Fournier. in Shreveport, Bossier, Louisiana. It's the 17th annual Miss Teen USA pageant with Britney Spears, NSYNC, Julie Moran, Ali Landry, and your host, Carson Daly. Plus, 51 of the hottest teens in America hoping to capture the crown. When we come back, the top 10 finalists. The 17th Annual Miss Teen USA Pageant. Sponsored by Clairol Herbal Essences. Created with organic herbs and all natural botanicals in pure mountain water. A totally organic experience. <laughs> 